Thank you so much for coming to the Rambush website and trying to learn more about our company. Uh, the project that I thought I'd walk through with you today, uh, we just recently completed, and is a uh, pleasurable, wonderful project to be involved with. Sadly, in 1900, Martin Maloney, a good Catholic, lost his daughter to tuberculosis, but convinced his bishop that he would build a church and name it after her in a way to remember her. He hired his architect friend, Horace Trumbauer, of Philadelphia, and they created this spectacular neoclassical building. Now, fast forward almost 120 years, uh, we were luckily called by a friend with whom we've worked before to move through a collaborative process to update, repair, and or address the failing terrazzo floor that was throughout the main body of the church. After a number of conversations, which were supported with designs, then color designs, then full-size color designs, then samples, then full-size samples, and finally with mock-ups, all in a collaborative uh, dialogue and process, we came up with a solution to replace the terrazzo with a three-part system. We created a center aisle that was more decorative than the rest of the main space here in the nave. We then followed the vocabulary size and color of Trumbauer's original 18 by 18 inch white marble flooring. We brought that across the two aisles, the head of the aisle and the rear aisle, and then through the side aisles so that there was a continuity and a connection to the size of tile and color of tile in the main sanctuary and in the side chapel. And finally, to be economically prudent, we put under the pews a large format tile, which very rarely is seen, but allows us to be more cost-effective uh, as we were moving through the project. What we did do as we felt it was important to mark the entrance into this space of worship, we put a Eucharistic symbol of wheat and grapes at the head of the aisle, at, or at the foot, excuse me, of the aisle as you encounter coming into the worship space. And at the head of the aisle, or the culmination of the aisle, we put another Eucharistic symbol, that of the uh, loaves and fishes, uh, that then intertwined the Trinitarian symbol and a Celtic knot, so that we could tip our hat to Martin Maloney's pride as a Catholic uh, of Irish descent. So here we go, we'll start to come through. Uh, we'll show you the beautiful wheat and grapes. And then uh, we would process as if we were in a funeral or in a wedding. As you can imagine, uh, this uh, church is really quite full with those. On average, there are four weddings a week and uh, six funerals a week. So we're coming to this uh, modest but beautifully elegant uh, sanctuary which is as originally constructed and conceived by Horace uh, and uh, Martin, with the exception of a very modest adjustment to accommodate uh, Vatican II. They have determined that they would prefer to see this as a historic worship environment and follow that than worrying about how much they are or are not adjusting to support the liturgy as it has evolved. We at Rambush, over the time of our making lighting fixtures starting in 1904 till now, feel that there is an appropriate recipe that is the way to generate and present as best we can a thorough and flexible lighting solution. That is to have down lights to read by, that is to have up lights to support the volume of the space, or in this case, the stunning painted murals and architectural coves in the ceiling. Accent lighting, again, for vertical surfaces, whether they be for the murals, whether they be head of aisle, front of altar, ambo, etc., and then finally glow. In this case, when Martin Maloney and Horace Trumbauer built this building, they were only able to have glow. So what we have done is to maintain that original glow so those people who have been away 
are comfortable with what they see when they come back. But supplement that with additional accent lighting, up lighting, and finally down lighting to support the different liturgies. So we would have daily mass, Sunday mass, weddings and funerals, mass with a bishop, visiting hours, and finally pre and post liturgy. Each one of those settings would have a different recipe of the down light, up light, accent, so that it supports a different mood or creates a different mood. So in this case, I'd like to point out the wall sconces, which were part of Martin and Horace's original glow. We've left them as glow. In the case of the lanterns, which are here, there was a little downlight glow, and then there was a body of the fixture glow. We have changed out that downlight glow because we felt it was glary, and integrated four performance LED modules that are then providing downlight into the pew. At the top of the fixture, we have added an additional four LED modules to provide uplight to support the volume of the space, to show off the spectacular coffering, as well as to support and present the stunning murals. Finally, there is illumination down the center aisle. So that's in our mind the system of fixtures we've put in. We've supplemented what was here, so people were comfortable when they came back but we surely have put in a larger engine other places in this space so that people can see and can be led through the liturgy carefully. So one of the wonderful components of a flexible lighting system is to have a dimmer. The dimmer, as we mentioned, controls and organizes the multiple channels of fixtures which carry out different tasks the down light, the up light, the accent light, and the decorative light, and then groups them into what we call presets or into saved settings. It's critical that light be present in the right places, in the right balance for a renovation or the creation of a worship environment to be appreciative and appreciated and successful. Here at St. Catharines, the first setting they have is daytime. General glow, setting a wonderful environment for prayer and contemplation as people come to spend time with their Lord here in a stunning space. The next setting would be visiting hours. We're illuminating the altar, the tabernacle, and some of the other areas of focus for prayer. The next setting would be pre and post liturgy when people are coming in, saying hello to their friends, gathering before and after a liturgy, whether that liturgy be a daily mass, a Sunday mass, uh, a funeral, a wedding, and that the overall focus is still on the liturgical furnishings, but the environment is more appreciated. Daily mass, we're going to increase the levels yet again, putting more light on the ambo and on the pulpit. And when we do that, we're then helping people to see what's going on. The next setting would be our Sunday Mass. Our volume of light will come up yet again. And then the culmination or the highest level of light uh, provided by the system would be weddings. So thank you. I hope you enjoy this. And uh, hopefully this will let you consider Rambush for your project. We feel that the most successful projects are one that we work with a community in a collaborative way to help design and define a visual and verbal goal that over time we work together to achieve to help you improve your space of worship. Thank you so much.